So here we have another problem guys, but this time this is about defined benefit plan. So here goes. Ang nire-require po ng problem, employee benefit expense, remeasurement gain or loss, both of them for 2019, benefit obligation, December 31, 2019, fair value of the plan asset, December 31, 2019 as well, accrued or prepaid defined benefit cost, and lastly, the journal entry to record, the 2019 employee benefit, defined benefit plan. So here, we will take number one and number two first. Kasi po, ang number one and number two, employee benefit expense and remeasurement, they are components of employee benefit cost. SNR. Ito po yung components natin whereby SN are covered in PL. Service cost and net interest. And the last component, the remeasurement, it is covered in OCI. Okay? So, SN. What are the components of service cost? S. Let's look for the components up here in the given. So, you have benefit obligation, January 1. We will use that later. Fair value plan asset, also useful later. But this one, okay, bingo. The current service cost would be useful in computing your S, service cost. Of course, it's already in the title. Discount rate would be useful in computing your net interest later. Benefits paid to the retirees, 2,200,000. You also have contribution to the plan, actual return on plan asset, net actuarial loss due to remeasurement of benefit obligation, and past service cost. Okay, we only have two. 1,700,000 and 500,000. The component of service cost that is not given here is the gain or loss on, on settlement. Uh, ito yung final payment sa employees. Pero for now, we have 1,700,000 plus 500,000 that should total 2,200,000. How about for net interest? For net interest, you have to remember two things. There is the interest expense component and the interest income component. One of them will increase your expense. Another will decrease your employee benefit expense. And yes, the interest expense comes from benefit obligation. Interest income will come from plan asset. All you have to do to get the interest is multiply the beginning balance of benefit obligation and plan asset with the discount rate. Okay? So, SN, service cost, net interest. If you organize your solution properly in computing that, you will arrive at a presentation that looks like this. So, here, service cost, as mentioned earlier, current service cost, past service cost, for a total service cost of 2,200,000. Then yung obligation natin, since this is all this is still a future payment, ano, much later into the future, it will of course incur interest expense. 1 million 80 is simply computed as 9 million, the beginning balance of benefit obligation times 12%. Thus, I have 1 million 80. Your interest income for plan assets, that's 1 million 200, that is derived simply by multiplying the beginning balance of your plan asset by the discount rate again. 10 million times 12%, 1,200,000. Your net interest, since mas mataas yung, yung interest income, 120 negative po ang magiging result. That is a reduction in your expense. Net reduction in our employee benefit expense. As follows. So the expense that we will be presenting in our income statement is 2,080,000 only. Yan. For requirement number 2 naman, uh, requirement number 2 requires us to get remeasurements. And for one, remeasurements, dalawa din po ang kailangan natin tandaan. Remember that you have two components to a defined benefit plan. There is the plan asset and there is the benefit obligation. The plan asset and the benefit obligation will always be remeasured at every balance sheet date. Kasi po, these are related to items that are so much further into the future. So they will fluctuate in their valuation. Yung benefit obligation mo, it's a liability that is very long term. May, ano yan, may changes in valuation, changes in actuarial assumption. Also, your plan asset, this is invested. Okay? So, nag-earn yan ng return. 
And that return has two components, the interest component and the remeasurement component. So most of the time, your benefit obligation, ibibigay sa'yo ano ang actuarial gain or loss or yung remeasurement loss mo. Kasi po, measuring the liability for so long is not the accountant's job anymore. That is an actuary's job, estimating how much benefits will be paid in the future. So in our problem here, binigay na sa atin yung actuarial remeasurement for the benefit obligation. Ito. And that is a loss. Sa remeasurements, loss means additional burden, additional cost. So this is additional to our employee benefit cost. Let me just clear out the display so that we can focus on one requirement at a time. Again, your actuarial loss due to remeasurement of benefit obligation, that is an additional cost on our part. So in our OCI, this will be presented as unrealized loss. Our plan asset will also have a remeasurement. However, that remeasurement is buried in a figure called your actual return on plan asset. Kasi dalawa po ang component ni actual return. It has an interest component and a remeasurement component. And yes, the interest component of this return is actually your interest income that we have computed earlier. So if I'm going to separate the interest income from return on plan asset, I will be able to get how much is for remeasurements. Requirement number two, if we did this correctly, our solution would look like this. So here we have it. Benefit obligation is given. That is a loss, so that is a positive additional cost. However, for plan asset, you need to compute it as follows. Dito. The plan asset would be computed as derived from actual return on plan asset. Remeasurement plus interest income. Interest income was computed earlier to be 1,200,000. And the actual return is given by 1,500,000. So if I would deduct 1,2 from 1,5, I can derive na meron tayong actuarial gain or remeasurement gain from the plan asset which is equal to 300,000 gain. Now this time since gain siya, it is a deduction in arriving at our remeasurements. So our remeasurement would net us 100,000 net remeasurement loss. That would be our answer for requirement 2. Now to answer the third requirement, benefit obligation. I presented you a T-account in a previous discussion na binigay ko. You can check that back if you have the time. Pero for now, benefit obligation, it is simply computed as follows. Benefit obligation, beginning balance, 9 million. Do we have any service cost? Meron po, additional yan, pag may service cost. 1,7. Also, Kanina, na-determine natin na may past service cost. That is also an additional. So, plus tayo ng 500,000. Also, your benefit obligation will be reduced by any payments made to the retirees. The payments would mean na meron tayong na-reduce in the balance of the obligation kasi may binayaran na obligation binayaran na liability. So, benefits paid to the retirees, that is a deduction. Okay? So, 9 million positive, 1 million 700 positive, past service cost positive, benefits paid to the retirees, negative. Also, meron pang isang component ang benefit obligation natin and that is your interest expense. This is a future liability and just like any other future liability, nag incur po ito ng, ex ng interest expense. So pag may interest expense, that is an additional liability on our part. So the 9 million, as we computed earlier, the interest expense was 1 million 80. Diba? Na-compute natin to kanina. Yang 1,080 na yan is an additional to our liability. And finally, meron pa tayong isa pang component ng benefit obligation and that is your net actuarial loss due to remeasurement of benefit obligation. Now, since this is a loss, ang loss po ay additional burden, di ba? It is additional benefit payable 
or benefit obligation. So, 10 million, i-add natin dyan ang employee benefit actuarial loss. 10 million 480 is our answer. And if we did our computation in a T-account manner, it should look like this. So, ito po yung benefit obligation natin. So, you have 9 million beginning, current service cost, past service cost, interest expense na kinumpute kanina, remeasurement loss, and the benefits paid. 10 million 480 total. So, we are now on requirement number 4, fair value of plan assets. So, to compute this, actually, I would prefer na meron tayong T-account, ano, pero... If we are going to straight up compute the plan asset fair value, we can do so by making this calculation. Unang una, meron tayong beginning balance, 10 million. Then, we also have here benefits paid to retirees. Okay, the benefits paid to retirees are actually paid against our plan asset. Ang ginamit natin na pangbayad sa benefits na to is your plan asset. So basically, that is a deduction from our plan asset na 10 million. So, minus tayo ng 2,200,000. Yan. Also, there is another one for contribution. Dito, additional ka, 2,000,000. The contribution is additional asset, of course, because this is additional fund. And there is an actual return on plan asset, which we know have two components. That has an interest component and a remeasurement component. So what we can do here actually is we can just add it up. Kasi alam naman natin ang components neto kanina. There. All in all, our plan asset should have a total of 11,300,000. If we did it in a T-account format, it should look like this. Ito po, beginning balance, contributions, benefits paid, interest income and remeasurement gain. Pwede sila pag-isahin. They can be return on plan asset. Your ending balance of 11,300 as computed. In our next requirement, tinatanong tayo what is the accrued or prepaid defined benefit cost. Actually, simply na lang gawin to if you already computed the benefit obligation and plan asset. Kasi po, whether you have accrued or prepaid benefit cost, it will depend on the balance of plan asset and benefit obligation. Kung mas mataas si plan asset, meaning meron kang prepayment. Pero pag mas malaki naman yung obligation mo, meaning meron kang accrued liability. You are required to make additional contributions. So, in our problem here, the defined benefit plan resulted to the following. So our answer is down here. Jan? Let's just compute it by comparing the plan asset ending balance versus the benefit obligation ending balance. So compare natin 11,300,000 versus 10,480,000. The net amount is a positive figure. Mas mataas ang ating assets kaysa sa obligation, which means na meron tayong prepaid benefit cost. Our investment exceeded the obligation. This is presented as an asset. This is the asset that we will present in our balance sheet. We do not present plan asset or benefit obligation in our balance sheet. Ito po ang net amount nila ang pinipresent. And if we did everything correctly, we should have the following journal entry. So requirement number 6 po, it requires us ano yung journal entry to record the defined benefit plan. And here is your journal entry. You have a debit to employee benefit expense as we have computed earlier. Your remeasurement is OCI, di ba? So it should be separated from the employee benefit expense. Actually, itong dalawang to, they represent SNR. SNR. Also, you have a credit to cash. What does this represent? Yang credit na yan, that is representative of our contribution to the benefit plan. Pero meron tayong credit na prepaid benefit cost of 180. Para saan yan? Ito po. The 180 is actually a decrease in our prepaid benefit cost. Because our prepaid benefit cost has the following computation. 
Prepaid benefit cost is credited for 180 because the prepaid asset account declined from an initial balance of 1 million to an ending balance of 820. Do you remember earlier, nag-compute tayo ng ending balance? Ito yung plan asset minus benefit obligation. Ito yung result natin. But this is for December 31, ha? For January 1, the balance of the prepaid benefit cost is 1 million and it's computed as follows. January 1 plan asset na 10 million versus benefit obligation on January 1 na 1 million, 9 million. It results in a prepayment of 1 million. So kung ititi account ko ngayon ang asset natin, you have 1 million beginning and then 820 required ending balance. That results into a decrease of 180. Thus, this will prompt us to credit the asset itself. Okay? So, stay tuned for more problems on employee benefits. Pero for now, that's all I have for you guys. I will see you again in our next video. Bye-bye!